here, the horse's foot, there's three main parts that I think are important to, to know the terminology about because you'll hear, hear farriers and other horse professionals refer to this part of the hoof wall in particular. Obviously the front part, just like the front part of our foot, is referred to as the toe. The middle part of the foot carries the term quarter. And then the back part of the foot is known as the heel. Um, sometimes farriers will even break that down into five parts. They'll have the toe at the front, then they'll have the toe quarters on either side of the toe, sort of at the corners, the quarters on either side at the middle of the foot about halfway back, and then the heel quarters, and then of course the heels, and obviously each foot has two of those, one on each side. Some other terms that I think are important to be aware of when we look at the outside of the horse's foot, the first one is the hairline or what we like to refer to as the coronet. Sometimes we'll, we'll hear the hairline referred to as the coronary band. The coronary band actually is an internal structure of the foot underneath the hairline that actually causes the hoof wall to grow. So we like to refer to the hairline sometimes as the coronet. The dorsal hoof wall is just the exterior of the hoof wall in particular we like to use that term near the front of the foot when we're dressing or removing flares. Um, but when you hear that term, dorsal means in front and on top of, and so that typically refers to the front area of up near the toe of the foot. Another term that we um, <clears throat> obviously probably goes without saying is the ground surface. So obviously that's opposite to the hairline but the ground surface or the bearing surface of the foot, sometimes referred to as, as, as the, uh, the palmer surface. And then at the backs, just above the heels where the hairline ties in with the periopal and the heels of the foot, we have the bulbs of the heels. And the bulbs are really important um, because they can change position according to how we trim and how we shoe the horse. So knowing the relationship of the heels to the bulbs is is, is important. So the bulbs would be the where the hairline ties in at the back of the foot. When we look at the internal structures of the foot, you can see in looking at a mid-sagittal section, and I've drawn a black line on the picture here to demonstrate about where the hairline would be, so we've removed half of the hoof or hoof capsule. And we look inside, we can see all kinds of different structures. We see the hoof wall at the front, we see the coffin bone in the middle of the picture. We see the navicular bone. There are just all kinds of structures. There are um, cartilages. There are cushions. There are sensitive structures. We can see the frog. We can see the sole. We can see the lamini that connects the bone. So there are a lot of different structures there, and we'll see if we can break those down and begin to understand um, where each of those parts are located to just kind of take a little anatomy lesson. Here's a picture of a hoof capsule, obviously on a cadaver leg that has been removed from the coffin bone. The, the portion that is red um, is actually the laminae that goes all the way around the surface of the coffin bone, all the way from toe, all the way around to the heels on both sides. It almost sort of looks like um, drapes or curtains in terms of how the folds are made. And it's very interesting because that is what attaches the hoof wall to the coffin bone. And the hoof wall is allowed to actually grow and migrate downward from the hairline, but yet the hoof capsule cannot twist inside the foot. And so it's a pretty amazing structure that that, that horse walks on. And obviously, you know, if we don't take care of that, the horse isn't going to be able to function properly. Okay, so now if we look at a diagram and try to understand what we were just seeing in, in the actual picture of a cadaver leg, um, if we were to, again, pull that hoof capsule off of the coffin bone, we can see that there are five sensitive structures of the foot that relate to the five insensitive structures. And those insensitive structures that we see either on the bottom of the hoof or on the outside of the hoof are the parts that make up the hoof. But when we add the sensitive structures and all the other internal structures in there, then we have the foot of the, ho the horse. Specifically, the five insensitive structures. The first one, right in the area of the hairline, is known as the periopal. Um, 
th this is the part that a, a lot of times at this time of the year you can you can see it um, sort of wet sometimes it'll be about three quarters to an inch below the surface of the hairline on the surface of the hoof wall and that's the part that actually connects the soft sensitive skin tissue to the hard horny hoof capsule and that's known as the periopal the hoof wall then is of course the part that the horse walks on that we see around the external, external <clears throat> part of the hoof capsule the white line is a, a thin structure that's actually yellowish in color, but if you trim it short enough, it actually becomes white, that, thus the term white line. It's about an eighth of an inch thick, and it follows the inside of the hoof wall, and we can see it on the bottom of the foot, and it actually joins together the sole in the hoof wall. And so as you'll see here in a little bit from a vi video that we're going to show of Dr. Chris Pollitz, the white line plays a really important role in connecting the sole and the hoof wall because as the horse walks, the sole actually descends downward and the hoof capsule extends outward. And so the white line holds all that together while the horse is walking and running and performing. In the middle of the foot, the triangular, triangular structure is known as the frog. And then the, the base of the foot is made up of the sole. And there are some th theories out there that say that the sole of the foot should actually help bear the weight of the horse. And I think I'm going to show you some information and allow you to make the decision for yourself whether that's a good idea or not. So for every, every external or insensitive structure, and what I mean by insensitive structure is all those structures that we just looked at that have no nerve endings, they have no blood vessels in them, so they have, they have no feeling, no circulation, for every one of those external or insensitive structures, there is a corresponding sensitive structure. And so just like we started with the periopal on the insensitive structures, we'll look at the sensitive structures, and the one that grows and produces the periopal is known as the perioplic ring. And of course, you wouldn't see these structures um, until we actually dissected a cad cadaver leg and can see this because they're all um, unexposed. The coronary band, we talked about that a little bit before. That's the part that, that is down below the perioplic ring that actually produces the hoof wall of the horse. And there are various layers there um, that are involved, but I think the important thing to understand is that's the part near the hairline that actually causes the growth of the hoof wall to occur. The bottom ends of those uh, drapes or curtains that we looked at known as the sensitive laminae the terminal ends or the bottom ends of those is actually what produces the white line. The sensitive frog, again the triangular structure in the middle of the foot produces the frog, and then the sensitive sole which actually attaches to the surface of the bottom of the coffin bone, that produces the sole that we see on the bottom of the horse's foot. And sometimes you may have noticed that some horse have, horses have white feet and some horses have dark feet and that is dictated by the pigmentation or lack thereof either in the hoof wall or the sole or the frog of the foot. If there's pigmentation or black coloring in the tissue of any of those sensitive structures then the, the corresponding insensitive structure or the part that we see on the outside or bottom of the horse's foot will be colored. So in order for a horse's foot to be dark colored there has to be dark pigmentation in that sensitive structure that grows that particular external 